During the period between the world wars, influential theorist Heinz Guderian had taken a great interest in the possibilities of the tank. His main problem lay in resolving the training and organizational challenges of delivering infantry to a battle in support of the tanks, instead of the slow process of marching on foot. Experience gained in combat during the Spanish Civil War had taught the German army that trucks were not adequate on their own. They had poor performance in open country, whereas the tracked tanks had more freedom of movement. The solution lay in the half-tracked Hanomag 251. Introduced in 1938, this fighting vehicle offered good off-road performance, decent protection, and carried 10 men fast enough to support the tanks. Guderian's blitzkrieg theory envisioned tanks disrupting the enemy's command, control, and logistics, while squads of infantry rode alongside and emerged where they were needed. Training as a panzer grenadier was extensive. They were expected to support the tanks at decisive moments on the battlefield and had to quickly adapt to the tank's maneuvers. It was therefore critical the commanders knew when to give the order for the grenadiers to exit the vehicles and fight on foot. During World War II, it was the Panzer Divisions which led the Brit Blitzkrieg in every campaign undertaken by the German Army. No single division consisted solely of tanks. Infantry support was also essential for their success. The Wehrmacht's 13 divisions evolved via upgrades from ordinary infantry divisions, first to motorized and then to Panzer Grenadiers. These were then built up over the course of the war by repeatedly augmenting the size of a regiment or battalion. The Waffen-SS also created 11 divisions by the same methods, or by creating new divisions from scratch as the war progressed. A number of Panzer Grenadier divisions in both the Army and SS were upgraded to full Panzer divisions as the war continued, including one Luftwaffe. These highly trained and well-equipped units would play a substantial role in Germany's early military successes in 1939 through to 1942. By 1943, the ranks of the Panzer Grenadiers had expanded substantially. Losses on the Eastern Front had made the replenishment of tanks an increasingly rare commodity. The transition from simpler Panzer Types 3 and 4 to the more complex Panthers and Tigers further exasperated the shortages. The Panzer Grenadier divisions were now incapable of repelling a major Soviet attack, but they still possessed sufficient firepower to overwhelm a stubborn infantry defense or even eliminate small armored threats. Throughout 1943, as the Panzer divisions began to decline in effectiveness, the Panzer Grenadiers continued to make good the shortfall. By the end of the year, however, of the 200 Grenadier battalions in service, only 26, or roughly 12%, were equipped with armored half-tracks, the remainder being equipped with trucks. The Panzer Grenadiers began to experience their own decline in 1944, due to lack of resources and the steady pressure of attrition of fighting on three fronts. Experienced men were now lost at an alarming rate, leading to reduced training periods for their replacements. From the beginning of 1944 until the final German defeat in May 1945, the Panzer Grenadiers shared in the irreversible decline of the German army. In the end, they remained an elite force and as such provided valuable lessons for their contemporaries, many of which are employed today within the armies of the world.